I don't care for this rain malarkey. Well, yeah, it has been very much needed here in Nottinghamshire and elsewhere in southeastern parts of the UK, no doubt. It's done some good, I suppose. It stops me going out, so days like this, it's time to catch up with the website a bit and also check on the livestock that I'm rearing presently. Once that's done, I like to sit here and get something out. In fact, I might show it you, if you ask nicely, of course. I'm going to get my pupa out. Who's a pretty boy then? Or will be. So then, we start our little foray through the pupa that I have at my disposal here at home. These are all from larva that I've bred, from eggs obtained by females, or some cases, these are the results from larva that I've purchased. Now, our first pupa is the smallest, and here it is. There are pupa considerably smaller than this, and this is the pupa of the green hair streak butterfly, it's your typical sort of hair streak blue or copper shape or ly lycidae family. They're all pretty much like this. These people are quite hairy as well, most of the hairs being on the abdominal end of the pupa. As you can see, it's about 8 mil in length, but there are hundreds and hundreds of pupa that are smaller than this, and they're pupa of the micromoth. I don't have one to hand unfortunately. But this will remain as a pupa right through till next spring, till about late April, and then the adult butterfly will emerge. So pupa number two. Slightly larger. This is probably the size of pupa most people will find while gardening, but this is the pupa of the muslin moth. It's an attractive moth, and this is the first time I've ever had a chance to rear any larva. I successfully managed to get an egg batch off a female that I caught, but of a decent sized egg batch, only two caterpillars actually emerged successfully. All the others died while trying to get out of the eggshell. I really don't know why, but I've lost quite a lot of larva this year, and I think it's generally through the heat that we've had. But muslin moth is a beautiful moth. I don't think it's as common as is made out in Nottinghamshire. In fact, I've only trapped one of these at light, so I was pleased when one of these flew across me at Sutton on Trent earlier in the year. I managed to pot it up, and it was a female, and she promptly laid me a batch of eggs, so at least I've got a chance to photograph the larva and hopefully the pupa, of which I have two, will overwinter successfully and emerge in the spring. So, our next species is this one. This is your typical sort of noctuid style pupa. Again, this is about an inch long, about 20 mil. And this is the pupa of the spectacle moth. Now I've reared this from a larva, a couple of larva that I found in Clipsnall Quarter a few weeks ago. We're now in the middle of August. And this pupa will emerge within a week or so. It's the first time that I've reared spectacle larva. As you can see, this one is fairly lively. The one good thing about pupa in fact, the one I'll show you in a bit is incredibly interactive and mobile. Spectacles are lovely moth, usually two, perhaps sometimes three broods a year, very common at light. 
that the lava I thought I might struggle to find, but it was quite easy in the end, feeding some nettle. So there we are, there's our first three pupa. I'll introduce one more. And this is not your typical pupa shape, it's a butterfly. And it's the pupa of the orange tip butterfly, an absolutely beautiful butterfly. But you can see now what a different shape we have. Head end is here, rear end of the abdomen is there. Now, you don't usually find orange tip pupa loose like that. They are attached and they're attached in the fashion that I'll show you here like that. In the wild, depending on what they're on, the pupa can almost resemble a thorn that certainly can appear to be part of the plant. There is a pad of silk at the end here which the pupa is attached to but also wrapped around is a single girdle of thread and that holds that pupa in place quite a remarkable design and I used to love in the 1980s when I used to have orange tips breeding in the fly cage at home and you could see the development and if it was a male pupa you could see the pattern of the wings extremely clearly as you can see this is a very different pupa to the three that we've shown you so far so there we are there's our first four pupa time to get slightly bigger. So, we're now getting larger and here's a pupa that is normally found in a tough cocoon. This one was purchased and it should have hatched in sort of March of this year but didn't but it's still alive so this chap here is a male emperor moth pupa. It's still viable and still very much alive. So emperor moth pupa can take longer than a year before emerging. This one looks as though it will emerge probably in March of next year of 2023 but you can see now that we're getting to a larger size here and that the pupa, the shape of the pupa is very very different male emperor moths as in all the Saturnidae have huge feathery antenna and you can see the difference you can see where the antenna will be in this strip here and you can see the two darker areas are where the eyes will form or are forming quite amazing and say very different pupa from anything that I'm going to show you next because we're now what most people would have been waiting for we're into the realm of the hawk moth so out with this one and in with this one this is the pupa of a broad bordered bee hawk moth i've got a number of these i just take these i take half a dozen or so normally i just like to rear them it's still very much a novelty because the broadwood bee hawk moth in Nottinghamshire was for many, many years an extreme rarity, only found and recorded in the Clumber Park area. It's now on something of a rampage and has been found widely throughout the Sherwood Forest area. Another beautiful day flying moth. To see these flying around the local patch now in the last two years it's quite remarkable but you can see now that we're getting into the realm of larger pupa so we're looking here at one two over two and a half to nearly three centimeters these are well over an inch it's not bigger than it looks actually so that is the pupa of the broad bordered bee hawk moth i'm going to put another one in here And a very different pupa. Hawk moth again, many people 
would have seen these as a lava wandering around while the lava is looking for a pupation place. And this is the pupa of the large elephant hawk moth, or elephant hawk moth, whichever you prefer to call it. And you can see it's a much larger moth and a much larger pupa. Quite a size. The caterpillars can get to an impressively large size. They're fabulous things. The moth is most beautiful, and the coloration of this pupa is quite different as well. But hummingbird hawk moth pupa is very similar to this, but hummingbird hawk moth pupa is more transparent. It's a fantastic pupa for being able to watch the development. I've put a series of photos in here showing the development inside the pupa as best as I can record it. It's quite a interesting way to see it and quite unique amongst the pupa I've seen. So, broad-bordered bee hawk moth pupa on the right, the little dark one, and the longer pale fawny coloured one is elephant hawk moth. Right, so to recap these next four pupa, these are the first two you've just seen, we have here Broad bordered bee hawk moth pupa, which is a fairly decent sized pupa in itself. Most people, if they dug one of these up, they would think it was massive. But as big as it may seem, it isn't all that big because here is the pupa of a beautiful moth. This is the pupa of the elephant hawk moth, fantastic barbie pink species, absolutely glorious and certainly one of the UK's most beautiful moths. And the pupa is also beautiful as well. It's quite an unusual colour, this sort of pale brown, almost cream in parts. So our next pupa, you've seen this before, but not in this form. That is our largest native moth, and it's the pupa of the privet hawk moth. Now the caterpillar has featured in two videos on this channel recently. One where I originally found it in the churchyard at Edwinstow on privet and when comparing it with death said hawk moth caterpillars this caterpillar got to a really good size itself and it is of course the privet hawk moth caterpillar. Most unusual thing about this is the separate part of the pupa that houses the proboscis. You can see there quite clearly. Pupa, when you think about what goes on inside, are truly amazing things. So, do they come bigger than that? You can see what size that is. Well, the answer is yes, they do. They come that big. And that, if I put my grubby forefinger which is almost world famous now. This is the pupa of the death said hawk moth. Now you saw the larva a few weeks ago. The larva get enormous and the pupa is as large as anything I've ever seen. It's a stunning thing. I've got five here, resulting from larva that I've just reared and this will hatch in a couple of weeks. So you can see just how large these pupa can get. So the increasing size of pupa that can all be found and are all found in the UK but remember our first pupa that we looked at there it is, a diminutive little butterfly and a huge brute of a hawk moth. 